Welcome back. Hi, my name is Fai Sokan. And in this video, I'm going to give you an overview about the Cisco Contact Center architecture. Now, Cisco Contact Center architecture strength is basically separation of the media from the application itself. The application is running on the core network of a Cisco WebEx, where the media, on the other hand, is running in something called the v, uh, uh, voice uh, media layer. Now, the media is handled by a component known as a voice pop or present point of presence, VPOP. And it stays in the VPOP. So whenever, uh, whenever you are establish a communication for voice call or channel, it, communi it communicates with your voice media player rather than with an application layer. The media is kept in a geographic region that is closer to your locations or uh, uh, compared to the applications. Now, uh, the application layer house the voice, media, and analytical application stack. So this is where, for example, all your software that is running your platform is hosting. That include maybe the web, web applications, the uh, any sort of licensing integrations that happens, or any API gateways, they're all in the application layer. End users will access their application via the internet. So therefore, no particular software is required for you and I to install in order for us to access that applications. We access this application using the Control Hub. So let's take a look at what Control Hub, again, where we can access these various applications. So in your Control Hub, on the left-hand side, you see various options here, messaging, you got your calling, contact center, this will give you the inner access from the customer perspective or user perspective to access your platform. Now you notice here that there is no, um, you don't, for this you don't have to download anything, you don't have to, uh, you know, configure your network to communicate with Control Hub. Of course, unless your com company has a, a restriction of accessing certain website or maybe you know you're in a country that may have uh, issues with VIP that might be a little different but in most cases you don't really need all you need is a web browser and a good internet connections you're good to go now the voice stacks works with multiple voice media player voice stacks would be, would be it would be the application that control or the control uh, signaling part of the application that will communicate with the media player, for example. Voice application will generate the data that is fed into your analytical stacks in a real time. Again, the analytical stacks will run in your application layer. So whenever a call coming in, the voice application, which is communicating with the voice media player, will push information into your analytical uh, ana ana analytics stacks or applications so that you can generate reports or get a statistic about your infrastructure. Now the media layer, which is right here, basically handles all call voice call media. This include the IVR or any SVC connections. If you are a company who wish to register your own voice gateway, with Cisco WebEx Contact Center, or if you want to uh, obtain a Citron from an approved uh, cloud vendor uh, that is approved by, of course, Cisco, then you will establish a Citron from that from their device into your voice media uh, gate uh, layer. So this is the this is where the V pops are sitting in there. So this is basically uh, the point of contact from external devices such as call manager, SIP gate, cube gateway, or a third party SIP provider will establish communication with that. Now, keep one thing in mind, not any, just, just not any third party provider can communicate with WebEx directly. It has to be the Cisco's listed one, but it doesn't mean that you cannot have a third party SIP. You could have that, by putting, for example, your own cube gateway and third party will communicate with the cube and the cube can communicate with your voice media layer. That is possible. Now the call control, uh, voice media layer will also deals with the call control such as answering, transferring and conference of the call. It is also where your recording are being handled, recording uh, tasks any PSTN integration with either Cisco Cloud PSTN or Cloud Connected PSTN, which, we, which is kind of like uh, external partners that Cisco has a, a, relation, a builder relationship with and integration with, and you and I will just communicate with them directly, those external partner, 
and establish a connect uh, contract with them. It also provides TTS is, uh, to integration. So let's say you want to use Google Dialogflow. Okay, if uh, any sort of external application that is supported by WebEx, that that device will communicate with Cisco Voice. Uh, sorry, the Voice Media Layer as well. Now, connectivity options. What are my connectivity options for my WebEx contact center? At those, at somehow the call has to come into my contact center, right? Whether it is coming from user from my same city, or maybe coming from user from overseas, but the call has to come into my environment. And this is where the connectivity comes into play. All the possible PSTN contact that you have, you could either use Cisco provided bundle, where Cisco use your PSTN provider, you could use service provider that are approved by Cisco, or you could use bring your own PSTN gateway, or that these are the, these are the devices that you can directly communicate with your WebEx contact center platform. But what if you already have some sort of PSTN uh, con con connectivity with your WebEx calling side of it? Maybe you have been using call WebEx calling for the last five, uh, five months maybe five years, who knows, but you want to now integrate with, uh, you, you want to utilize the PSTN that you already have on the WebEx calling rather than building your own new set of PSTN because it really doesn't make much different, right? So let me go and show you an example. Now, this is my, uh, my own personal WebEx calling, well, voice bootcamp, not personal, voice bootcamp WebEx calling account. We pay Cisco and for that we are getting these services, messaging, meeting and calling. But I don't have a contact center at this moment. So let's assume that I am currently running my environment. I do have a full fledged PSTN already provided for my location. So when I go to my main location, you'll see that I have a PSTN connection and that is provided by the Cisco PSTN. So from my perspective, Cisco is my PSTN provider. Now, what does that mean? That means that I could use this PSTN with my contact center if I want to go into Cisco WebEx contact center solution. And that is when this side of the network can be used. So it is possible that you could use the Cisco calling PSTN provider provide within your Cisco contact center solutions. Now, the advantage of using Cisco provided bundle PSTN First of all, it's very easy to get. It's a matter of probably less than 60 seconds. You just simply select Cisco PSTN. For example, if I were to go and create a new location. Uh, no, okay, so let's say I go to calling and I go to location and I wanna add a new location. And of course, this is very important where you choose a location to be. Okay, once I do that, I could simply go to my location and manage PSTN and easily change that PSTN to Cisco PSTN. This is a customer premise PSTN. I'm not gonna change that right now, but this is something can be done. It's just a matter of a couple of clicks and you're done in terms of PSTN, getting PSTN from Cisco. Now, um, advantage, very fast. Uh, you pay only uh, uh, for based on the Cisco plan. I mean, again, Cisco plan is mostly probably for North America, uh, for Canada, US, where you will buy a plan that you can probably get unlimited calls inbound and outbound within those two countries. Uh, most most calling pl plan that we have in Canada and US, you can call either country for free of charge without any additional cost. It is built into your monthly plan that we provide it. Now, what is advantage? Of course, it's mostly available for these two countries at this moment, as of 2020, March 18. Bundles uh, needed to be purchased for all your agent individually. Uh, no additional recurring charge for the numbers or number porting. So if you, uh, if you create a PSTN bundle for an agent, let's say uh, agent X, you will get a phone number for free, or you can import an existing phone number into that uh, environment. Now, no metering or reporting of your PSTN uses because it is considered to be all, uh, all you can use within the North, those two countries. 
The bundled PST for contact center is non-regulated service. What does that mean? That means that no 911 service will be provided. And most likely those services like 411, 211, 311, these are special numbers that you can dial in Canada and US. Of course, each country has their own numbers that can get service. Like for example, if I'm in Canada and I want to, uh, I want to know when is a garbage pickup day or I want to know where is the closest swimming pool, public swimming pool. I can call 311 and they will let me know right away based on my address. They will send me, okay, here is your list of closest swimming pool that you might have. These services are regulated by the government. Uh, they are actually provided by the government as well and they are not included in the Cisco PSTM. WebEx contact center is over the top service, so therefore no 911 will be supported for that. If you do dial 911, you, uh, you want to let your user know that it's probably better to use your uh, physical uh, phone. The reason is that your agent could be all over the place, right? Your agent, you may not even have an agent at home. And if they call 911, well, which 911 you're going to send the traffic to? You could be, you could have an agent logging in from India, but working for a company in the US. Very common practice. In that case, if, if the person in India calls 911, and that, that will become a difficult, right? Uh, so uh, that's why the WebEx contact center, PSTN, do not support 911. But you do get a local number where termination will, ter uh, P any call coming into the PSTN will terminate into the agent phone directly. The reason, the number is mapped to the contact center agent. Uh, you can also get a toll-free number into your uh, contact center, which will give, because, hey, you want customers to dial your contact center by dialing a toll-free number or a number, right? Well, in that case, you, will, you can dial, you can obtain a toll-free, which will be uh, basically charges will be agent one, uh, plus an IVR per month. Uh, mostly available in the United States at this moment. The new contact center, WebEx calling. So what if you want to um, use the WebEx calling contact center? Well, in that scenario, call will come in via the Cisco provided PSTN into your contact center. After you hear the IVR welcome message, you go back and forth and it's time to connect the call to an agent. After the call getting all the contact center treatment, it goes out to the same PSTN to reach the agent on the customer premises. If the customer is working from, let's say their office in Toronto, then it will use the same PSTN to reach that Toronto offices. If you are working with service provider, let's say you get a PSTN from your service provider, First of all, the service provider will establish a SIP trunk with a VPOP, which will then be registered with your account. So when you register through the VPOP, again, we'll show you how that is done in the lab guide. You will be providing some information that only matches your account. Because remember, WebEx contact center platform is shared by other companies as well. So therefore, you don't want everybody's call to get mixed up in that environment. So what do you do? you map the service provider or the service provider will register with the VPOP. Oh, by the way, VPOP is probably nothing but a, uh, some sort of cube, SBC cube rather, whatever, just customizations, that's all. So uh, service provider will set up a SIP trunk with parameters that matches your account. Now in that scenario, the VPOP will, uh, service provider partners and all incoming calls to your VPOP will be uh, part registered with your WebEx contact center account. Now on the ingress toward the agent on the customer premises, now it does require voice media manager or v VMM with a steering digit such as which are supported in the cube on a VPOP environment. What if you want to bring your own PSTN? Well, that is also possible as well. All calls will come in via the customer on-premise network. So, and the reason why you want to do that because a lot of companies have invested serious amount of money over the last two, three, four, five years, already may have a PSTN that they are still under contract. So they don't, it's not like somebody, oh, tomorrow I got a WebEx contact center, let's drop everything, build everything on the cloud. No, it doesn't work like that in the real world. In the real world, we have to make a decision based on practicality, not based on emotions. So that means that we said, okay, we have a PSTN, 
we still have three more years out of our five years contract let's utilize that before we do a migration to fully cloud-based solutions so in this case customer calls your toll-free number the call comes into your call manager or cucm or whatever the control device you might have it could be a third-party control device as well but from there the call will be sent to the vpop the vpop will then registers which is registering the call manager with your contact center environment call gets treated by the agent or sorry by the ivr system and now you want to send the calls to an agent who's sitting right there so what you do you basically webex will send the call back to the same call manager in order to route the call to that particular agent if you're going to use webex calling remember the webex calling my, your you may already have an environment set up in that scenario how is the call going to be routed so now the scenario is that you build you got your contact center up and running but when it comes to pstn you're going to use the pstn on your webex calling whether that is a cloud connected partner or your local gateway we'll talk about each one in different scenarios so in this scenario customer is using their own cloud connected partner from the webex calling all inbound pstn calls will come into the webex calling first using the cloud connected pstn so for example here you see the call coming in it goes into the uh, cloud connect connected from there it comes into the vpop and then it gets treated so after the agent treats the uh, it's not the agent after the ivr treat treatment is applied call will be sent to the agent now agent happens to be a webex calling endpoint which is registered to of course to the webex so in this scenario the call will be sent to uh, via the webex calling access sbc which is right here to send the calls to that particular agent so this is when scenario is when call is coming through a pstn via cloud connected partner into your webex environment now there's a difference in here when the customer calls coming into the cloud connected partner the cloud connected partner will establish a sip trunk with what we call peer svc so this is basically peer svc peering svc this is on the webex calling side then from there the call gets come into the webex contact center gets processed but now the call has to go to an agent when that call goes to an agent that are registered to webex calling it will use what we call access svc not the peering svc it's going to use a different svc to register where the user is reachable from so call coming from pstn from a cloud connected partner will hit the peering svc but when the call is about to go to agent is going to use the access sbc for that all right so let's take a look at when you bring your own pstn so let's say i want to get my own maybe i already have a 20 t1 line and i want to import that well in that scenario what will happen is your call will first come in sorry come in here from to the access sbc get processed but once the call is ready to go to an agent okay so as you can see the local gateway call is coming so call will come in via the customer owned pstn and it will terminate on the cube router the local gateway will deliver the call to your webex sbc access sbc not the peering keep in mind access sbc because peering is for the cloud connected partner after the call gets treatment the call will be sent to the agent over the internet because this is coming through the cloud uh, local gateway so the call will go over the internet to the on-premise uh, agent so in this scenario all inbound pstn calls to the local gateway when which is sent to the call manager set for centralized dial plan call manager will send a call to the webex contact center used with the webex calling via the local gateway so this is kind of like a, a, a extra detour after getting the contract call contract treatment call will be sent to the agent via the call manager which is registered to the call manager because this is the call manager phone uh, via the call manager via the local gateway into the call manager so it basically comes into the local gateway goes to your ex, uh, 
your um, Webex contact center. When the call has to go to the agent, that call will come in back to the local gateway from there goes to call manager and finally to the agent. All right, so that these are the connectivity options that are available for you to decide whether you want to use a Cisco cloud connected for environment or if you want to use a partner or partner that is registered with the Webex calling or your own local gateway can also be registered and can be used for routing traffic. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.